Back on TYT Sports, NBA free agency once again opens on July 1st, which is Friday, and one of the first names that will likely be signing is Hassan Whiteside of the Miami Heat, the center there. He uh, was very quick to announce multiple times on different platforms, interviews, whatever, which way you may put it, that he's not going to wait around. He's very eager, 12.01 a.m., maybe on Friday. No, not actually. He's going to start taking meetings, and I think he'll be one of the first big-name free agents to move. The question of discussion here, though, Francis, is, is Hassan Whiteside worth the gamble? Because Hassan Whiteside is still an experiment. Now, his numbers on paper are through the damn roof, right? So if we go to uh, Hassan Whiteside, element number uh, one, these are at least the teams that he's taken meetings with or he plans on, and probably might be others as well, but the Portland Trailblazers, Dallas Mavericks, Los Angeles Lakers, and of course the Miami Heat where he's currently located. Uh, and we can continue because uh, the article from SI.com made a good point about Whiteside's stats possibly just being empty numbers, padded. Let's take a look at that quote, too. Uh, there are questions as to whether Whiteside's stats are somewhat empty. The Heat grabbed the higher percentage of defensive boards with Whiteside off the court, and Miami's defensive rating dropped by less than a point with Whiteside on the bench. Whiteside's blocks look great on paper, but he often chases shots that leave his teammates susceptible to offensive rebounds and second-chance ch points. He did mention, however, uh, did account for a huge difference in Miami's offensive rebounding. So don't be jaded by 17.8 points per game, 11-12 rebounds per game, 4.6, 5.0, 5.2 blocks per game. Because although those numbers are through the roof, and although that he's put up a triple-double with blocks, which is on paper tremendous, there is some major flaws to his defensive ability. Yeah, he he's a block party and he's very aesthetically pleasing for the highlight tape. He'll fit in well to mm -hmm. the Sprite block cam, even though it's a dunk cam. That's NBA 2K. You're thinking Damn it. The Carl Damn Jr. It. He's a great player to watch at times, right? But even so, sitting at a distance, five, six, seven, eight rows back, thanks a lot to our EP, Dan Keston, for getting those, those tickets. Yes, he has great tickets at the Clippers game. You can tell that it wasn't all it panned out to be when you bring Hassan Whiteside in. He was a gamble, uh, uh, and a lot of people believed that, the Miami Heat. But... How many times did we say did we see Dwayne Wade consistently try to tell him what to do or where to be? And that's understandable. Dwayne Wade's a very mature player in the league. But it wasn't out of guidance. It was out of frustration. And it was like, okay, Hassan, you need to be here. You need to be in that position. You cannot go chasing for that highlight reel block. Mm -hmm. You need to, at times, remember your position. Now, that being said, it all depends on the system that he plays into. Hassan Whiteside will provide so much depth in the offensive rebounding category. He's going to literally grab anything that is uh, free to, to grasp at in the opposition third. But you have to weigh that up. If you're the team that's lacking defensive capabilities and you're going to bring in a man like Hassan Whiteside who's going to try and block everything. He's like me on 2K. I just jump for everything. I will block yeah, is what I can do. Point, yeah. But <laughs> it can be useful, but it all depends on how your defensive system plays around. If you're a team that sticks very close to their opponent and likes to go man for man marking... He's not going to fit in as well because he's going to try and chase that block. But would I gamble on him if I was a Clippers or if I was a, as he's taking meetings? And, and by the way, I want to state a point about this whole taking meeting thing. I like it because in my sport, we're left just pondering what these players are going to be like. Any sort of glimpse, like Cristiano Ronaldo takes a trip to Paris to go on a nice family vacation. He's going to PSG. He's going to he's took the meeting right. with PSG, whereas actually in NBA, they are very vocal about who they'll take meetings with. It's not this sort of hearsay game. It's like, all right, Kevin Durant's going to take a meeting with this team and this team and this team. So there's your categories. There's the people that he may go to rather than this whole Ch game still, of Chinese whispers. I still think there's a, a little bit of that. Like, for example, the Carmelo Anthony's recruiting Kevin Durant to the Knicks. Car Kevin Durant hasn't taken a meeting with the Knicks. <laughs> so it's, like, it, it's similar in a way, but at yeah. least you know, like the Trailblazers are going to be a big player for him. The Lakers are going to be a big player for him. Um, speaking of you in 2K and Hassan Whiteside in 2K, look at that transition. Our third quote has to do with uh, Hassan Whiteside playing as himself. He was just so terrible, like terrible Whiteside of his former version of his playable <laughs> self. In a recent Bleacher Report feature, he couldn't make layups, he couldn't move, he couldn't do nothing. He was like a mascot. He couldn't guard this ketchup bottle, and you're looking at yourself like, I'm better than this. <laughs> so uh, it's always funny when these guys talk about their own like 2K characters. I always mention Kevin Durant talking about how he plays as LeBron James in 2K because he's like the, one of the best 2K players. But in terms of Whiteside, uh, I call it a gamble and I call it an experiment, but if I was a GM, I would gamble on him mm -hmm. because uh, if, you, if he does 
accept the new system, accept more of a defensive role, and really works on his game, he's still young. He still can mature. Uh, and if, that, if those things start to click, well, then you have yourself a freak athletic center who can be a good rim protector, who's young and athletic enough to run the floor, and doesn't even need to do as much as he does on the offensive end. Because yeah. uh, the way the NBA is going, the, the evolution of this game as it gets you know, more and more of a spaced out perimeter uh, style of play, or that style of play that wins championships at least, then Hassan Whiteside becomes a major X factor for your team. That's mm -hmm. why I think there's a team that's off that list that should be interested in signing Whiteside. And that would be the Golden State Warriors. Interesting. Because Whiteside also has some injury problems. I think all big men throughout history will always have the occasional injury problem. Yeah. Um, but with Whiteside, too, um, at least when it comes to taking that risk, it's not like he's going to call. I mean, he, he might get a max deal. But with the way salary caps are going up, I think you can also trade him if it doesn't work out. Yeah. And you can get something in return. So I'm surprised that the Heat don't want to go more all in on him, but then I look at the Heat's current free agency plan, and right now Dwayne Wade opted out of his contract, or they haven't, they didn't opt out, he hasn't accepted his player option, and they're still in talks. Be surprised to see Dwayne Wade leave the Heat, but given that this free agency this summer is going to be a, uh, a train off the rails, in terms of where guys might end up landing and what trades could be happening alongside the free agency pickups, uh, somebody like Whiteside and Wade, and Wade leaving is, to me, as likely a possibility as Whiteside and Wade staying. 50 can I? 50. Yeah. Can I see the list again of the possible teams? The four meetings he's taken. Four meetings least. that he's taken. So, again, right, the Mavs, yeah, the Lakers, yeah. He obviously uh, makes sense, but I, I don't know. Like Sam Whiteside's the type of player that I think could do with a little bit of grooming, as we mentioned, and fit into a team that seamlessly already has that position somewhat on lock, but then they can bring him along for the ride and use him uh, as a rotation like the Spurs, something like that, where they've had that position showed up for the majority of their time. And I think sure. if you were to have him come along for the journey and be a versatile player to come in, and Golden State the exact same. Golden State, I don't think, have a standout center, all right? Like, they, they're going to be versatile, or Zhao or Bogut, or whoever else is going to play in Whoever's there. Whoever's healthy at the moment. Whoever's <laughs> healthy. So I think he could fit in there. I just don't think, the way that he was brought into the heat, I felt that it was all in. I was like, you're going to play in that position um, with Chris Bosch going through certain uh, obstacles in his career that he had to take up a lot more responsibility right. than you'd expect from someone. But some players are able to do that. Carl Anthony Towns can come in and he takes that responsibility and he looks very, it, it looks well on him. So it can happen. Anthony Davis, another one. But I think that Hassan Whiteside needs a little bit more grooming to his game to make him the potential great player that he could be. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's the worst decision for him to stay at the Heat, but I'd like to see him go somewhere where I think they can bring him along for the journey and, and continue to adjust his game. Yeah, well, he'll continue to be a highlight tape regardless. It'll no be, doubt. It'll be exciting to watch. It'll be fun to watch. But again, don't be jaded by the numbers. There's certain players that have not proven what their numbers have shown through at least his last two seasons. He's still an experiment. He's still a gamble. And that gamble at least shows that he can get better. It's not like a rookie coming to the league that could be a huge bust. I don't think Whiteside's a huge bust. I just think that his ceiling is a little bit lower than what we expected uh, when we saw that wingspan, that freak athleticism when he came into the league. All right, comment below. Where do you think Whiteside should sign an NBA free agency? Uh, make sure to like, favorite, subscribe the video. We are almost at 300,000 subscribers. What? a lot of subscribers. That's almost as many blocks as Whiteside had against the New York Knicks. <laughs> at Francis underscore Maxwell, at Jason Rubin 91, and at TYT Sports on Twitter.